Bird flight is magical. Every feather is engineered to fly. It inspired us to invent the airplane and it inspired me to become both an engineer and a biologist. But remarkably, we don't really understand why birds can fly further, longer, or higher than the drones that a company like Amazon is planning to use to deploy goods towards us. Actually, we don't really understand how birds manipulate airflow to lift their body from the ground. And Mythbusters made a TV show on this. Basically, the myth goes as follows. If, if, if you have a truck full of birds and you're trying to go over a very old bridge, will it help you to make the birds fly inside? So, <laughs> Mythbusters told us, no, the weight of the truck will not change. But the answer is that scientists don't really know. We have never measured before how a bird supports its own body weight using lift in the air. So, and it's actually, there are many things that we don't understand about bird flight. Here, for example, you see a bar-tailed gut width of 300 grams, and whereas our drones can fly a few miles, basically this small bird can fly across the globe. From Alaska to New Zealand, 11,700 kilometers straight over Hawaii, nonstop, no breaking there. So they're amazing. And, and if you look at some other birds, for example, this 40 gram swift, well, you know, our drones can fly minutes, but not really hours, especially the small ones. But this swift, doesn't land for a whole year. It catches his insects in the air, it scoops water from the surface, it's roosting up in the air, and actually, it even mates in the air. Amazing. Please, don't try this at home. <laughs> so, if we take it one step further, actually, even geese can fly better than delivery drones. They can fly over the Himalaya. But yeah, in all fairness, there are also these boring geese behind me. You see them flying. Well, you know, these are the geese that the French love. But they don't seem to be very good performance. Well, actually, if we zoom in and carefully look at what they do, they do some incredible stuff too. Look, this goose here is flying inverted with its neck twisted 180 degrees to keep its head level and its eyes horizontal so it can see straight. It is actually a flying camera platform and it's very good at stabilizing its vision. So it's incredible. And we actually study behaviors like this up close and this high-speed video was taken, and it's the first video of this behavior, behavior, was taken by volunteers helping my lab. And it's videos like this that inspire me and my students to think about the impossible. And we actually study how birds fly in the lab. So here you see two birds in our lab, Ray and Gaga, they're parrotlets, and they get unlimited healthy food. So that's broccoli, apple, but like you and me, they have their favorite snacks. And that really helps us train them. They really like millet seeds. And so basically, whenever we point somewhere in the lab, for example, a perch, this bird will fly over by itself and just look, here it goes. And in return, we give it a single millet seed. It's probably the cheapest thing at Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing because training based on reward, rewards really works well. So here, for example, you see how we do this. Basically, we give a seed for every behavior we like and we ignore everything else. And it has enabled us to even train this bird to fly with laser safety goggles. <laughs> and it will happily show it off right here. <laughs> and this has enabled us 
to actually measure the airflow around the bird, so how it manipulates the air around the wing to stay aloft, to generate lift. And whereas in theory, it is indeed true that we can calculate the lift based on this airflow because the equations are exact. The problem with measurements is there's always so much noise that it doesn't work out well. So and that's why we know so little about how birds generate lift. And if you think about it, it's actually a really simple question. It's about this thing. We have a scale, we have a bird, it's sitting on there, and we measure its weight. And we want to know how a bird lifts this weight in the air. And so one day I figured, you know what? If a bird is flying above a scale, uh, you know, it's going to be higher pressure underneath the wings, and therefore it will push down on the scale, and we can measure this. And indeed, we can measure this because of this higher pressure, but there's also lower pressure above the wings, and that will suck up the bird. And the problem with that is the scale is not measuring this. And the way I solved this was by thinking about a very big box around the bird. So basically, it's flying in a big volume. It has to be super lightweight, and we need very sensitive sensors. But because of these, like this solution, it's called an aerodynamic force platform, we can measure how the bird pushes down on the box and also how it's sucking the box down a little bit. And therefore, we get the complete uh, weight support. And here you see this in a recording. During the downstroke, the bird supports twice its body weight, whereas during the upstroke, it actually doesn't support its body weight at all. So during the downstroke twice and the upstroke, no weight support. So during the upstroke, it is in free fall. And because it's in free fall, it won't push down on the box or it won't push down on the truck. So yes, if you would have a truck full of birds and they would all flap at the same time and make this upstroke at the same time, then for 25 milliseconds, it would weigh less. And so we think about a speed limit of a truck of 55 miles per hour, we would cover a whopping two feet. <laughs> and after that, it's twice the weight and game over. So we can agree with the Mythbusters that, yeah, this is really impractical, but their explanation was wrong. Basically, it will vary in time, and it's important for our understanding for how birds fly. How does this work for some of the most magical birds on the planet? Hummingbirds. Here you see a hummingbird filmed in the cactus garden at Stanford by my students. And basically, you see it take off. How does it support its body weight? According to flow measurements, they don't support their body weight that much during the upstroke. But we wanted to really check this with this new instrument. And so Rivers built this wonderful setup here at Jasper's Ridge Biological Reserve at Stanford. Um, and Here's his setup, and it's actually a hummingbird spy. It has a feeder with unlimited sugar water, and he trained the birds to fly up to the feeder, and they hover. And while they're hovering there in the center of his setup, basically the 4.5 gram bird, that's almost nothing, is sending pressure waves down and up, and we're measuring that at the bottom and the top, and that enables us to measure how they generate lift force to support their weight. And now we can actually see that indeed, yes, they do support their lift during their weight during the downstroke, but also during the upstroke. It's actually equivalent. It's very symmetric. And because of this symmetry in lift generation, they're very efficient. And this helps us understand why they are the only birds that can hover sustained. And it's like insight like this that we're trying to translate into robot design to make better flying tiny drones. And we do this actually in a very special lab at Stanford. So we try to develop bird-like drones. And the next step that we're taking actually right now is we're developing a special bird wind tunnel. It is the first bird wind tunnel in a department of engineering in the world. Uh, we work that together with biologists and engineers to really understand how birds fly and then translate that understanding into better flying robots. And you really see new things when you look at birds flying in a wind tunnel. Here is a flock of birds that have trained in the past to fly in a wind tunnel. And if you use a high-speed camera to film how they fly, you discover new ideas. Look at these birds. Like when they flap this fast, you don't see much. But here in slow motion, you can really see what they do. And this is a female bird pushing a male bird down. 
showing the future of engineering. <laughs> Thank you.